You can see here the experience bar, and when the white of the bar completely fills up, as it is here now, uh, you gain a level just as you would expect. Now you actually choose your doctrine or class during uh, character creation, and once you have chosen one, you must complete it before you can start another doctrine. There is no way to respec or put levels into multiple doctrines of the same tier at this time. All doctrines have 15 levels and there are currently four tier one doctrines. Fighter, Leader, Adept, and Marksman. And then there are three tier two doctrines, Assassin, Vanguard, and Hunter. There should be more doctrines added as the game progresses through beta. And although I haven't specifically heard that there will be doctrines higher than tier two, I fully expect that we will get at least a third tier of doctrines and possibly even a fourth tier. Now that we've finished with the basics, let's have a look-see inside the doctrines. Here you'll see that the doctrine has a description of what it does as well as what it focuses on right here, what keystone abilities and ultimate abilities or desperate acts and heroic measures that you'll get, as well as what characteristics and skills you'll have access to with this doctrine. Now you can only advance characteristics and skills that are present here or that you got from uh, some other step of character creation, such as your origin story. As you gain levels, you progress around this wheel in a clockwise manner. At each new level, you gain whatever is shown here. The green in this bar indicates levels that you have already taken and the yellow indicates what level is currently available to you. You can see everything you get access to from this or any doctrine by clicking on the different symbols at each level and reading what's available in this list to the right side. Now let's have a quick look at what these different symbols mean. The arrow bar symbol always gives you a choice of skills to advance. The scroll will always be a characteristics advancement. The explosion marks a talent that you can choose, while the hand gives you the choice of an ability. The gear symbol right here gives you a special ability or character feature that will passively improve your heroic acts in battle. And the lock symbol gives you access to a new heroic act and desperate measure, or at level 20 for tier two doctrines, it unlocks an additional action point. Yeah, I mean, that's great and all, but what exactly are each of the things that I just mentioned? Uh, well, if we look at characteristics and skills, I think that they're pretty self-explanatory. I imagine everybody gets what those are. But if we look here at talents, we can see that they are generally passive abilities uh, that improve your character, although there are a few of them that are activated abilities. And you can think of these basically as feats, because that's pretty much what they are. Now abilities are actually activated abilities uh, that give you actions you can take during combat. And if we look at heroic acts and desperate measures, we'll see that they are powerful activated abilities that can only be used once enough momentum has been gained or lost during combat. These ultimate abilities will commonly turn an iffy situation into an easy win or a desperate situation into a narrow victory. These are basically the most powerful thing that each character can use during combat. Now, if we take a quick look at tier two doctrines, we'll see that they are basically the same as tier one doctrines, except that they give you access to different talents and abilities and heroic acts and desperate measures, of course. And at the fifth level of the tier two doctrines, you get an additional action point. The only other way in which they are different is that they do have prerequisites. If you scroll down here, you'll see that assassins must come from the fighter or adept doctrine. Vanguards, on the other hand, must come from the fighter or leader doctrine. And if we look at hunters, we'll see that they must come from the marksman or the adept doctrine. That is pretty much everything that there is to know about leveling up your character and the classes or doctrines at this time in the beta. The system really is not groundbreaking, 
but it is competent, satisfying, and allows you to plan out your characters and your party as needed. I do wish that there was an AI tool here to allow us to plan each level of the character in advance, creating a sort of blueprint for the character we ultimately want, but we're probably not getting anything like that. Or if we do, maybe in a mod. Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe for plenty more Rogue Trader content. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.